Another huge difference between the second nuclear age and the first is the uh, role of emotion and hysteria. There's people in here, when I look around, I dare say, remember the Cuban Missile Crisis rather well. And in those instances, you, will not you would not find a million people at Times Square or deployed in the Washington Wall screaming for the blood of the Russians. That we, we must wipe out these inferior people because they don't have a right to exist. At no time where, uh, during the Cuban Missile Crisis or any other Cold War nuclear crisis did you find mobs like that in Red Square in the Kremlin. Sometimes there were mobs, but they never appeared when, there was a new, when we were in a crisis between the two superpowers. Why? Because the leaders of the two sides knew they could be backed into a corner they might not get out of. The Cold War was run not on nationalism and hysteria. It was very distant from the street. Nobody was screaming for the other side's blood. We had clinical images, some of you may recall, of Secretary of Defense McNamara with big uh, charts showing concave marginal return functions as a function of the megatonnage we would land on the Soviet Union. And he was making almost like systems analysis arguments about how many megatons we needed. We treated the Cold War with a kind of clinical rationality which was detached from emotion, hysteria, and hatred. And in a nuclear crisis between India and Pakistan, Israel and Iran, North Korea and South Korea, or dare I say even China and Japan or the United States, my only point is simple, hysteria, nationalism is going to be much larger. In fact, the Cold War, we, you know, it did have an ideology, freedom and liberty versus atheistic godless communism, if it, to simplify a little bit. Uh, I went to Catholic school, and that was the aspects that were emphasized to me, <laughs> that, that they were atheists who didn't believe in God. <clears throat> the ideology, and we sort of think there isn't any ideology for a second nuclear age, but there is. And it's called nationalism. A force in the world, the US, and particularly the US academic community, so consistently underestimates its power. If you were to go to a college campus today and look at courses on nationalism, they would have titles like Nationalism and the Politics of Genocide. It's looked at in entirely in a negative way, and it may be negative, but it doesn't look negative if you're in Russia. Pakistan, India, or Israel. It's a driving force that we ignore and dislike at our peril. <clears throat>